Hello class. Hello class, I am just um, getting this stream started and if you um, if you are just now arriving and you're here and you're watching, please let me know by um, typing something into the chat. Maybe just type your name into the chat and that way I'll know that some people are coming in. And I'm going to kind of move this so I can see the chat here. And um, I'll give you guys a minute to come in. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about... Uh, hello, Rob. Glad you're here. Um, we're going to talk about the um, Module 1 assignments that were just posted in Critique. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to put in individual, individual comments yet on each of your... Um, each of your submissions, but I go ahead and encourage you all to, once you post your work to critique, what you need to do is then go um, and visit the other threads of your fellow students, and you need to give them feedback by posting on their threads. And, all right, let me get this back. Um, so. So that's what, I, what I'm here to say first, is make sure that after you post your work, you go, go ahead and comment on your peers' work. Um, most of you have kind of commented on what was difficult for you and what you struggled with. Um, the idea is just to get a conversation going underneath each um, student's work where we're helping each other out. You know, you might say, well, the proportions of your wine bottle or, or just making, you know, observations that might be helpful. You might say, well, the, the proportions on your, your wine bottle improved after, um, after the, you cited and measured, um, you know, and think, think to yourself, in which ways did they improve? Did the, did the proportions look more accurate? Um, or if the person, you know, didn't seem to cite and measure at all, you might say, did you cite and measure? Um, so what we're doing is we're just kind of giving each other um, feedback, and, and that's what I want you to do. Um, so what we're going to start with here then is um, I'm going to talk a little bit about... Um, hello, Shishma, welcome. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, what I've seen in the critique. I have gone through and I've, I've looked at it. Um, so let's start off with the cross-contour. And I think most of you are doing a really good job on the cross contour. You just got to remember that a curved uh, surface gets a curved line, right? So if we are, um, let me, if you have, let's say you're looking at a cylinder, right? So you, your cylinder top. This is the. This is an ellipse. These are the things that are very hard that we need to practice. Um, quite a bit, the ellipses. So let's say you're drawing a cylinder, you've got your ellipse, and you just, this angle, I mean, this uh, measurement here changes depending on how, um, depending on your view of the ellipse. So if you are way above the ellipse, this is going to be a taller measurement. If you're closer to eye level, then it's going to be shorter. Um, and we're assuming this surface around this way is curved, right? So your bottom line, this line, and this line need to reflect that curved surface, okay? So what I get from a lot of people who are just starting is they'll draw this. And do you see what that does to the illusion? It ruins it, right? So um, what we're trying to achieve with cross contour is we're trying to create an illusion um, based on the curvatures of the or the terrain of the surface that you're drawing. So um, this would look much more realistic, right? Because this would um, this would show that the cylinder is curved. Okay, so. That's um, kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about um, cross contour and the fact that a curved surface gets a curved line and a flat surface gets a flat line, right? So if, 
if I were just to draw a flat surface, I, it would have a, the contour would just be flat, right? Something like this. This would look like um, a penny or a nickel, um, or a manhole cover, or a waffle, <laughs> right? So, uh, but if if I wanted to say that this this um, surface was spherical, then I've got it, it's a curved surface all around, and I've got to I've got to show that with my lines. So. If I'm going this way across it with my finger, let's say, or as I'm drawing it, you don't want a flat line because that indicates that the surface is flat. But it's not. It is, it is curved, right? So you can do this kind of a thing to show um, a sphere, right? These kind of marks and these kind of marks. To show that something is spherical. Um, and for the most part, you guys did really well on your, um, your cross contour. Just try to um, slow down as you're doing things. I think the biggest problem is when people try to do things too quickly. And um, let's say you have, um, you have a lemon, and a lemon is, is kind of based, it's kind of based off of a, um, you know, it's, uh, it's oblong, but it is round-ish. It's based off of a sphere. It's like if I took a sphere and stretched it out a little bit, right? So let's say your lemon looks like this um, on the contour of it. So it's this part here has, has um, you know, has a, a sphere kind of a curve going this way and then it comes out from whatever point here and comes out this way okay and then these lines you're going to want to um, represent the line that's going down the center is going to be you know it might be closer to flat than the others and these others you're going to um, just kind of try to represent the arc of the lines. Um, and this is easier than the apple. The apple has more, more contours. Okay, but the, um, the lemon then is just going to be a little bit more curved like this. And that curve as it gets towards your eye might be a little bit might flatten out a little bit. So for, for, for the most part, this is not a fancy line drawing, but a, a lemon is, is a fairly simple uh, object to draw. Um, so the, the point of doing, of practicing these um, cross contour drawings is just to to start to get used to the um, to get used to the idea of a curved surface getting a curved line. Um, what I want you to practice in your sketchbooks is um, um, is I want you to practice the um, the basic shapes. So your ellipses, I really want you to practice the ellipse. The ellipse is built on this kind of a, of, um, a perpendicular axis, right? Uh, the ellipse takes a lot of practice. It, it, it helps to sometimes hold your pencil like this and just do larger circles. Um, not circles, ellipses. Um, and just practice that. Ellipse takes a lot of practice. The, the main problem that I have is that people tend to want to draw them like, like this a little bit um, with just a flat line. But you've got to try to remember that ellipses, you should be able to take an ellipse and fold it over and it should be symmetrical. Okay, so it shouldn't be flat on the bottom. If it's arcing here, it should also arc here. And so we just want to practice that ghosting method. The ghosting method is where you, um, when you're drawing, you want to get your arm moving and not put too much pressure on it. Give, give your arm 
time to get the rhythm of the, the feeling of that ellipse and then slowly press down as, and then um, make a bunch of lines. You can't, you can't rely on being accurate like the first time you draw something. Like if I want to draw an ellipse, you know, you don't want to just do that. You want to, you want to, um, and see how hard I pressed and then it was more permanent. You want to kind of ghost and then as you're seeing it, you want to kind of um, press a little harder and then you can make corrections and that's that's why it, it's so great to have this um, vine charcoal because it's really forgiving um, if I do this with my charcoal pencil it's um, you know it leaves more of a permanent line okay so I want you to practice the, your cross contour now if I'm looking at this ellipse the cross contour the top I'm sorry this um, cylinder as a whole as I said, going around this way, there's there's curvature, right? And the curve is probably going to follow this uh, curve of the ellipse. So it's going to come around like this. And these lines would be basically straight, right? And then here's the trick. If I continue, even though this is a flat surface, right, this upper part of the cylinder, and I think I've already said this in the video, so I won't spend too much time on it, but if I continue the lines up like that, it, it, ruins, my, it ruins my perspective. So this is a change in plane. So a change in plane requires a change in line direction for, um, for it to be... Uh, to create that illusion of that actual change. So if I had them going straight up, it starts looking um, like hollow, like a hollow chamber, right? It doesn't quite look right. But if I change the line direction and go across this way, suddenly, suddenly it looks more like a solid um, cylinder. Okay, so I want you to practice your cylinder and your sphere, and then the last thing I want to talk about are cubes. Um, and um, Haywood Studios, I will talk about the drawings and what's due um, in just a little bit. Once I, you know, towards the end, we'll talk about where we are in the module and, and what we're going to do this week. Um, which, um, you know, this week is almost over. I, I apologize, I had kind of a um, my daughter was here earlier um, because we had um, an issue with the um, with, with she usually goes with another family to school and um, it got complicated for that day. So um, what we're gonna probably do are some some three object drawings today. Once I get done talking, we'll um, I'll have you do some objects and just simple like this just. Um, probably not going to be cross contour, just, just like you did that bottle um, cup and saucer drawing. We'll do um, maybe one more drawing where you put a couple of objects and practice your sighting and measuring. Alright, so while I'm on the subject right now of, um, of the ellipses and the um, cross contour, does anybody have any questions on the cross contour before I move on to blind contour? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead um, and talk a little bit about um, blind contour. So cross contour is the way I have it here. I'm just I'm, what I'm just wanting you to do is is not get too complicated, but I, I want you to start to understand how we represent a curved surface and how we create um, a surface or an illusion of a surface that has volume, okay? Um, and this is going to help you so much when we get to still life. Ellipses, I can't stress enough, how they're going to keep coming up. Ellipses, cylinders, and cubes are going to keep coming up. Um, so you need to know how to draw them. You need to be very comfortable with them. So um, the, the one last thing I've got to do before we move on is look at some cubes. Cubes, the thing I notice about your box drawings is some of you had, had um, problems with the parallel lines. 
So um, when you have a box, let's say um, we have a box, a cube that's just kind of um, a one-to-one -one ratio, more of a square cube. This is the front that's facing you. When you draw, you want, these lines are parallel, right? These two lines are parallel, and these two lines are parallel that are across from each other. That's true of each face of the cube. So when you're drawing this face up here, this line is going to be parallel. Let's say you measure this angle with your measuring stick, and you, you figure out exactly how what you're looking at, what that, um, what that angle is. Then you want to come back and make this line just parallel to that one. And then this next line up here is parallel to this one, right? So everything that's across from each other should be parallel. So then I'm going to make this one parallel. And then this one across from here, these are going to be parallel. So this one, this back edge should be parallel here. Um, and this is, you know, once we start talking about perspective, we're going to change this up a little bit. But in general, um, just, just think about parallel lines. Um, you know, a common mistake that I'll see is, you know, you'll have, um, you'll have a box that's going this way. And it, it, the one that gives everybody the most trouble is the top. Because when you're observing something, some of the angles can be really severe. Um, and it's harder to, um, to recognize um, the top. So just want to kind of keep it and loosen up. That's why we're, that's why we're using this kind of um, drawing tool. It helps you to, to loosen up, be sketchy. Don't, don't be slow and deliberate. Slow and deliberate is what we do with blind contour and, and with that kind of contour drawing. But as we move on, as we get to still life, we're going to try to be sketchy. We're going to try to loosen up. We're going to try to use our whole arm when drawing. Um, so now when I draw this, this last line here, I just want it to be parallel to this one, right? These two. So... That's what we need to think about when we're doing um, cubes. And then this last one should be parallel to that one. Um, and that will just kind of help you help you to um, understand, you know, if this line is off, if this line is not parallel, then your cube is going to look like this. It's suddenly going, what happens when, that, when I do that? It starts looking like... Um, you have a box that's that the top is warped and it's lifting up. Um, so what we it's an easy fix, right? So if you have if your drawing looks like this, then you can just say, ah, oh, this isn't parallel. And if you're not sure, take two things like two pencils, or if you have bamboo skewers, you can do that. And we can tell this is not parallel, right? Because they they intersect. Parallel lines are supposed to go on forever without touching, right? That's parallel, that's parallel. So if you need to correct something that looks like that, you can use something like this and put it down to help you see, okay, I need to draw that more parallel. I need to draw this more parallel. Um, so I hope that helps. Cubes can be tricky, especially the tops from severe angles, you know, with the closer that you get to eye level with the cube, the more severe that top angle is going to be. Um, and again, it's a flat surface, so if I were doing a contour drawing of it, it gets, you know, just a, a flat line. However, what do I need to do with this line when there's a change in plane? Can anybody type it in? I'm going to change the line direction, right? Change the line direction. Boy, this thing has a burr in it. Change the line direction. So, like that. Okay, in this line direction, I'm just going to follow, try to stay parallel with the other, with these lines. Yeah, and that's the other thing. If, you, if you're off, with your lines, it doesn't uh, doesn't translate very well. All right, 
So that is, this is just the basics. I know this is a little boring at this point, but you will start to see how practicing this is going to help you, especially these ellipses. If you have something cylindrical, you might want to try um, drawing it from different eye levels. Um, and notice that the further below your eye level it becomes, the greater this measurement is. It becomes more circular. So think about it. If you have a cup and you look down on the cup, it, you're going to see the circular opening. But if you put it out in front of you and you raise it up, it's going to start becoming an ellipse. So an ellipse is just really a circle seen from the side. So you're going to practice it so that you don't get these points. This is another uh, common problem with ellipses I see in student work is the ellipse looking flat on the bottom or lopsided or having points like this. You don't want it to have a point, right? Um, because just keep in mind it's a circle. And so it's, it's got to be smooth and round on the edges. All right, enough about contour and um, cross contour. Good, Rob, change direction. That's exactly right. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the wine bottle drawings, and um, actually, I won't. I'll uh, before I get there, I'll talk about your blind contour drawings because um, I took a look at those on the critique page. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that when students are in a hurry and they're drawing, let's say I have my hand like that. And let's say I want to. Um, when you're in a rush, you might draw a hand. Um, looking something like this, right? But that's kind of a that's kind of a Mickey Mouse hand, right? That's um that's not it doesn't really look like my hand. It looks like a glove, right? Because a glove doesn't you know glove is made out of fabric. It's um, and so it doesn't really have all these interesting wrinkles and things that hands have. So I can tell when when you've rushed your your contour drawing as when this is sketchy and I just showed you how to be real sketchy the thing that you want to do with um, blind contour drawings and line drawings in general is you want to slow down and you want to really look at all the the nooks and crannies. Um, the blind contour drawings aren't going to look um, they're not going to look realistic because you're you're not looking, you're not paying attention to your drawing. You're only paying attention to your hand. Um, so if I start looking and um, I'm going to try to look over here. If I don't look at what I'm drawing, I'm going to start right here and just do this finger. Um, I'm going to go really slow and then... I'm going to see where there's a change in line direction, a uh, change in um, plane. I'm going to change my line direction. And then I'm going real slow, but I could probably go slower. I'm seeing a couple of lines in there. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing that for the whole hand. And see how it looks? It doesn't, it doesn't really um, look like a finger. If I slow down a little bit more, it'll start to look more realistic. But what will happen is the fingers won't be in the right place. Um, and that's fine. That's, this, that's why this is an exercise. What it is, is it's an exercise to coordinate your eye and your hand. So that when my eye is traveling and I see something like this where there's a little a little crease right here um, there's another crease right here right there um, as I am drawing as my eye moves along the surface of my hand I'm supposed to just alter my um, supposed to alter the direction of of my drawing implement and it, this is not to create beautiful drawings. This is to practice your eye-hand coordination. That's it. So don't freak out. Everybody's like, oh my god, my drawing looks terrible. It, well, it's supposed to. Um, we do this thing sometimes where you can sit directly across from another person and draw each other's faces without looking. 
Um, and it's hilarious. I mean, it's um, faces just look hilarious. But the idea is for you to slow down and, and really look at what you're drawing. Instead of trying to draw the thing that's in your head, which is looks like the Mickey Mouse glove, right? Instead of trying to draw that, what we're trying to do is slow down and we're trying to only focus on a small section at a time and draw exactly what we see. So again, this is only an exercise. It's something good for you to practice. Um, it doesn't have to be your hand. A hand is, is typically what people like to, to do it with because its hand has such an interesting surface. But try practicing it in your sketchbook of other things. And um, it's just, just like um, in music playing a scale. Um, it's just an exercise. Okay, so um, so if you rushed it and your 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 cross contour, I mean your blind contour drawing looks like a glove. Try it one more time. Try slowing it down. Try try to get all these. Of course, my hand's probably a little bit more rough looking than yours, but um, try to get all these little um, changes in direction and um, little bumps and and wrinkles and things. All right. So um, we're moving on to the wine bottle and sighting and measuring. Um, so I have one of those drawings here. And so that you can see it, I'm going to move it this way. All right. So. In the sighting and measuring, this one, there's not a drastic difference, but there is a little bit of a difference. Um, what, the one thing I was concerned about when I looked at people's drawings, I wasn't always sure that they sighted and measured. I should see, see some kind of evidence that you've erased that you sighted and measured, like the box that you put outside of it or the... Um, you know, the, if you divided that box into thirds or, or fifths or sixths or whatever it is that you did. If you're drawing something that is um, symmetrical, like a wine bottle is, I should see evidence of the center line. Um, if you're good at erasing, that's fine. Just, you know, I just, I can tell um, what happens as, um, as the semester goes on, I can tell that, you know, when people aren't citing and measuring, it just becomes pretty obvious to me. So um, make sure that you're actually doing the citing and measuring. If you ha are having um, a problem understanding, understanding the proportions, you might need to watch the video a few times. I find that that's helpful sometimes to re-watch the, the video where I talk about citing and measuring. Um, and again, just to review proportions, a square is just um, a one-to-one -one proportion. And what that means is that this side, if I, if I took a measure of it with this stick it, by, by moving my thumb and aligning this here, the square is uh, on that edge, it is about that long. So if I take the stick and move it and compare, it should be about the same. So that means one of this measurement fits into one of these measurements. But when something is twice as tall as it is wide, that could be a one to two ratio. So you have um, this, this measurement fits into this side twice. So one, two. All right. So that is one to two. And the reason this is so helpful is it, is it helps you, it helps you draw things quickly um, and change size. So if I knew something was a one to two um, ratio, I could just draw this box. As long as it was one to two, I could draw it a tiny one to two box or I could draw a huge one to two box. And then I could just draw, um, you know, whatever it is inside of it, um, given those proportions and ratios. Um, the other thing I want to go ahead and tell you guys, um, as we get going, if you're drawing a bottle that's sitting on a table, it helps for the bottle to be, um, the line of the bottle to be per parallel to the edge of your paper. If it's not parallel to the edge of your paper, it'll look like the bottle is leaning, right? So that's something also we're going to learn as we keep going. Keep in mind the edges of your paper, 
and try to keep things that are that are um, exactly um, standing upright. You want to keep them parallel to the edge of your paper. If something is leaning, then that's another story. But um, so keep that in mind. Um, so citing and measuring is basically just trying to compare to get a unit of measurement within an object that you can use to understand um, the proportions of the whole thing. So usually when I have people draw, you know, the, do the kind of freehand drawing of a bottle, they might draw something that has um, a really skinny neck and like a really large um, outside, something like that. Um, and then um, once they go and sight and measure, they'll understand that this, um, this width here fits into the length about um, three times. And then they'll say, oh, okay, well, this, is, this, this one that I drew fits in here about five times. So I can see that I made it too skinny. And we start off doing this so that we can just train our eye to start to see things more accurately. And once you've done this, and I know it's kind of a pain, and it gets to be really old, and it gives you a headache. Um, once you start doing it, your eye gets better. It's hard to explain, but you, you start seeing things more clearly. Um, so this is one thing on this, this drawing you may not notice, the sort of that, the hip area of the wine bottle. Here, they're kind of flat. But here, we've, we've given it a nice curve. Right, and that curve is probably closer to the actual wine bottle than this this kind of flat area was. Um, and one way to draw those curves and see those curves is if you have your box here, you can look at the negative space. So if you, if you think about this, the negative space, okay, the object itself is the positive space. The object around, the area around the object is the negative space. If I were to draw like a little dotted line right here, this is kind of, this space is, is a triangle, right? You see the triangle here? So what you can do is you can hold up your stick in your, your eye, your line of view to the bottle. And then just kind of look at that shape. What, what kind of a shape does it make? Um, and then, um, then go from there. Try to make this shape. And then once you've, you've, you're fine with one side and you say, okay, that looks like the bottle. That looks like that negative space. I think that's accurate. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, since it's a, a symmetrical object, you just need to mirror that on the other side. And having this line in place will help you mirror that. If you want, in your brain, you can think about drawing this triangle more than you're thinking about drawing the bottle itself. Okay, and that's just kind of a, a mind trick. That's kind of a workaround. Uh, because our brains sometimes want to tell us to draw something, um, you know, it, without really looking at it objectively. And citing and measuring is helping you to look at something more objectively. Um, so, um, on the wine bottles, just make sure that you've done the citing and measuring. If you didn't do the citing and measuring, you didn't do it correctly, and the problem is, you really have to get it right here in this module because we're gonna once we get to um, to the um, the module after value, which is where you're gonna be setting up a lot of objects and drawing still lives. You're gonna want that foundation there because it's the foundation of the entire course is citing and measuring. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve our accuracy and our proportions of our drawings. So that when you show someone your portfolio for your next art program, you can show them that you can draw something from observation and, and draw it accurately. And this is the way to do that. I know, trust me, I know right now it's not that thrilling. Um, but by the time we get to still life, I think you're going to be very happy uh, at how much better you're able to draw. So if you just stick with me, stick with me, and be happy, be super happy. When you draw something and you see little improvements, um, that should make you happy. It's just like when you're, when you're playing trumpet and one day it sounds like a dying cow, 
the next day it sounds a little better, the next day it sounds a little better, and before you know it, you have this beautiful tone, right? So that's what we're going for. All right, so the cup saucer um, thing, I talked about it uh, on, this is the drawing from the video that you watched. And for the most part, you guys, um, your cup and saucers look really, um, look pretty good. Um, but again, the, the, the most common mistakes that I saw is, is a lack of accuracy due to not using sighting and measuring or um, due to not uh, making things symmetrical, like this teacup. It's got, it should have a center line because it's symmetrical. You can measure to make sure this side is equal, equal with this side. Look at your ellipse. Um, how much of, of the, the opening of the cup are you seeing? Does it look right? Um, you know, if I draw something, a cup like this from the side, and put my center line, and then I draw the opening like this, that might not be exact, exactly accurate if this is a circle, right? Because then the, um, the angle that you're viewing the uh, opening of the cup, which would be more like this, is not correctly represented. And that just means that you need to bring that ellipse down to where you're drawing what you're seeing from your eye level. Um, another thing that can happen, and which is an easy fix, is if your ellipse or something is kind of crooked, you know, if your cup is straight but your ellipse is crooked, you could just draw center lines for things, right? You can draw a center line for your ellipse if you want. And then you can, it's just be willing to make changes. That's why we're sketchy at this point. Be willing to make changes. Um, you know, don't, don't try to... Um, spend too much time on, on one line, you know, loosen up. Um, so, um, deciding and measuring quiz. Uh, I don't recall having a sighting and measuring quiz. I don't, th I don't think that there is one. Um, I, usually what I do, uh, I don't like quizzes and, and, um, I know a lot of people do do quizzes to make sure you've you've completed the um, the material. But for for me, uh, being an art professor and being in this this art um, genre, what I want to see is I want to see you practicing it. I want to see that um, you're practicing your your sighting and measuring. So I'm not going to give you a quiz on it, but I want to see your drawings. I want to see this drawing. If you did this drawing and it wasn't accurate. You know, think about redoing. <clears throat> okay, so um, so this is the uh, the one thing I saw then was problems with things not being symmetrical. Another thing is the box, like what I went over in the beginning, how um, boxes might uh, the lines might not be parallel. Um, it might look like the top is lifting up. Um, so those are the things that you want to look at. All right, so um, that's a bottle, cup, and saucer um, drawing. So what I want you to do um, today is I want you to get um, I want you to get um, four objects um, and arrange them in some way, like this. Um, get four objects. You can use a, a box for one of them. Let's say you had a little bit of trouble with your box. Why don't you Why don't you get a box again and then put um, three objects near us, maybe one of them on it and, and some around it. Um, get three objects that you can draw and practice your sighting and measuring. Um, I want it to be on the 18 by 24 paper. So so get get three objects. Um, I will um, show you some examples of things I have around the house. Um, it could be um, it could be a different shape cup. Um, it could be um, you know I don't want you to, to get too complicated. Try to keep it basic for this. Something that's not a very complicated thing like a flower or something like that. But you can um, you know 
maybe get some, some, you know, in your pantry, maybe you have some cans, that's a cylinder, right? Um, maybe you've got um, some fruit. Um, just, just get some objects and line them up, to, not line them up, but organize them in such a way that you can um, examine the relationship between them and, um, you know, practice your sighting and measuring. Um, I have, there's a candlestick might be another example um, of something. If you have that, um, I'm, I'm just looking at things in my room. I have an old metronome that's um, kind of um, a basic uh, shape. Um, you might have just different things laying around. You know, maybe, maybe you have a stapler. A stapler is really just modified cubes, um, rectangles. Um, so just any, any um, objects, you know, a coffee pot. If you have a coffee pot in, in your home, take that off. Put that, um, put that down somewhere. Um, let's say you had a problem with, a, with um, drawing the boxes or you need to practice your parallel lines. Get, um, get a box. Put the coffee pot on the box. Um, if you have a pepper grinder, that might be a cylinder that's modified. Put the pepper grinder um, down by, uh, by the coffee pot on the box um, and draw those things. Um, so what I would like you to do is try to um, get that done um, and add it to the critique um, by editing your thread. Um, the way you edit your thread is you go into your thread, click on your name, and that'll bring up um, your um, your pictures and your drawing. And there's a little down arrow um, by your name, and you can choose edit or edit thread. And then that will get you back into where you can upload another picture. And remember to click that little camera icon and um, upload um, upload your next picture. Okay? So um, so that's those are the main things that I'm seeing. The other thing I was seeing is that you all have not yet um, replied to your or made a comment on each other's drawings. That's what critique is. In critique, we go in a room and we put up our own drawing, and everybody puts up their drawings next to our drawing, and we go around and we um, we talk about each drawing individually, and everybody gives their um, their opinion. You know, uh, you know, maybe you say, well, the ellipse looks a little lopsided or maybe you need a center line to help you help you get something to be more um, more accurate more um, balanced or you might say it's crooked you know uh, um, and a critique again I'll remind you I think I've talked about it before but um, a critique is something it's not us criticizing each other it's us helping each other see how to improve and so you might say um, you did a great job on, on this, it looks really great, um, you know, like let's say I had this going right here on, on this ellipse, you know, you might say, but it looks like your ellipse was flat on the end, you know, maybe, maybe you can, if you fix that, okay, so, so just things like that. Remember that we're a community. Um, we're, we are trying to help each other. Um, and the great thing about um, going in and looking at ev all your peers' work is you're going to learn from what they did. You're not only going to learn from me, but it's super important that you learn from your peers. You may say, oh, wow, I see how she did that. I, I wouldn't have thought about doing that. That's a great idea. I think I'll try it. Um, and then you can look and see what other people, what advice they gave to each person. And you'll then start to see, okay, I understand how to talk about art now. I understand a little bit better about what we're doing. I understand a little bit better about center lines, um, you know, about um, practicing ellipses and why that's important. Um, so I really, really encourage you to go back today to that critique area and take advantage of, of the learning that can be done there. It's also part of your participation grade, so that if you if you don't leave feedback for your peers, that's that will come off of your grade. 
Um, and I'm not too much of a stickler on it at first, but just realize that your participation in that critique thread really directly influences your, your experience of this class. It's going to make a huge difference, um, at least I, from what I've noticed in the past. The classes that have those active critique threads, they love the class. They're like, man, this class is great. But if, you know, if we have, um, if I have a section of, of students that are, you know, reticent to post, then the class just isn't that much fun for people. So, so make it fun for each other. Go back in there, um, look at other people's work, give them feedback, get their feedback. Um, and that's how we get better, right? So let's do that. Um, so does anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? About the cross contour, blind contour, sighting and measuring. Also, let me tell you, if you're really struggling with sighting and measuring, which a lot of students do, you can also, um, you know, schedule a meeting with me um, or, you know, send me an email, tell me what you're struggling with. Um, these kind of things are, are aimed at, at helping, um, but, you know, again, when the, when the class is live and in person, I go around and talk to each person as you're drawing and help you as you're drawing. And it's hard for me to, to do that um, when we're online. So, um, you know, just feel free to ask questions now um, so that I can demonstrate anything you might want me to. Also, feel free to, um, to uh, take advantage of my office hours or just email me and say, you know, can we, can we uh, meet and um, can you help me? Um, so Ellis uh, Shushma, you have a question. Do we need to comment on every student for a good participation grade? Um, you really should. You really should. And it's, it's, your comment doesn't have to be um, for everybody. It doesn't have to be like a book. Um, it should be, um, you know, thoughtful. Um, some, some students, you're, you might have you, um, you know, their drawings might, you might have more to say about some students' drawing than others. So um, just try, to, try as much as you can to participate. There's only 15 people in the class. Um, last semester it was 20, so that was, that's a little bit easier. Um, and did you mention picking up the kit you created for us? No. Um, okay, so part of the, I have not done that yet. I haven't taken it there. Um, the, um, the person that was there to hand out the kits last semester, which was when I created that video, she is um, retired and she's not there. So what I have to figure out um, is um, how, how am I going to disseminate this to you safely without too many people being um, in the same space at the same time. Um, so um, I will call um, into, the, uh, into Joni. Joni is our department secretary, and her office is up there on the second floor. I might be able to see, to give her some of the kits. And the kits basically just have charcoal pencils. Um, I have a little bit of this I can spare, probably not this size, but I have a little bit of vine charcoal. Um, and so charcoal pencils, vine charcoal, and I do have some bamboo skewers. Um, and again, you can, you can sight and measure without bamboo skewers. Um, I also have a lot of, of kits already put together that, that people didn't pick up last semester. Um, I'll just go ahead and, and reiterate, I know that you guys already know this and you're probably sick of hearing about it, but I want to urge you to always wear a mask when you are not in your home. Um, especially if you go into school. If you go in, I mean, it's required, you've got to have a mask. Um, but I, I can't stress that more because right now the numbers are off the charts in, in Georgia. And there's that more, um, there's a strain of COVID that is, is much more contagious than the original strain. Um, when you go into stores, 
Um, it's, I don't know if everybody's in the metro area. It's a little bit better here, but um, I go up to North Georgia quite a bit because I have a cabin up there. And people up in North Georgia uh, at the stores I go into a lot of times aren't wearing masks. A lot of the um, people who are in the store shopping aren't wearing masks. So make sure that you protect yourself and that you protect other people by wearing a mask. Um, and so I'm going to say that about going in to get these supplies. If you do go into school, make sure you've got a mask on. Um, and that's it for the soapbox. Um, so, um, so for next week, I will go ahead and make a posting on the, um, on the announcements about doing one more drawing. Um, it's 12.51, so class is, is, goes on to 2.45, so use that time to go ahead and gather up your objects, take a photograph of your objects, and practice, um, this is my daughter, Juno, Juno, you can wave and say hello. Hi. Hi, she's, she's here today for school. Um, so you can, um, Go ahead and take a picture of, of, try to do four objects, and practice your sighting and measuring. Do one more drawing for this module, and then next week we're going to move on to value. So what we have here is we're just doing mostly line drawings, and we're, we're worrying about proportion and accuracy um, in, in getting things right. We're worried about contour. Then what we're going to do is we're going to marry that with value. Value is lightness or darkness. Then, uh, or what some people call shading. So we're going to get the shading portion uh, of learning down uh, in the next module. And then the third module is still life. We're going to put what we learned in this module, sighting and measuring, together with, um, with value. And when we combine those two things, we're started, we'll start to draw things to look very, very realistic. And that's our goal for um, still life portion. Um, so, okay. Um, any, any final questions? So, again, today, with the remainder of your class time, I want you to go gather up some objects to draw. Okay, Amy, for, for all the drawing, do we need to make a new thread about it? No, please don't make a new thread. Use, in, in each module, you should only have one thread with your name on it. And the way you add to that thread is you go and you click on your name where you've uploaded your, um, let's say you've already uploaded for this. What you do is you go back into the critique thread, click on your name, and there's a little downward facing arrow. It's like, it's like this, Amy, uh, or whatever. And then I think there's an arrow that looks like a V, kind of like that. If you click on that, you'll have options that come up, and one of them will be edit. So click on edit, and then that's going to allow you to upload more photos into your thread, your original thread. It will also allow you to change or add to what you've written in the text box. So what it gets super confusing if each student has multiple threads, and then it just makes it even more difficult to um, to then go back and, and give any kind of feedback. All right, so only edit your original thread. Don't start a new one. Um, in each module, you should only have one thread. And that way, in each module, there will only be 15 threads that you, as a student, have to go through and comment on. And that's if nobody drops the class or if... if you know, people are sometimes uh, behind, so there'll be 15 or less threads for you to comment on. Um, will the week number two announcement be posted to the week one? Um, I don't necessarily do an announcement every week. Um, sometimes I just do one announcement for the module. Um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and post in, an, in the announcements today um, the um, about drawing... Um, drawing multiple objects. Um, so uh, sometimes there'll be, uh, on Mondays, there'll be a new announcement. 
Um, but other times I might say, you know, this module, and modules are usually about two weeks long, so sometimes there won't be a new one. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, this one got away from us a little bit, I think, for me, because this was kind of a crazy week. Um, and so I think last semester I had people do a whole bunch of object drawings. This time I'm just going to have you do the four object drawing today or this weekend. And then I think we'll be, we'll be ready to move on to value. Um, any, any other questions? Did you all watch the inauguration? Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, hope you remember to vote. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so um, <laughs> I won't. Uh, I won't lecture you about COVID and voting in one day, but uh, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Um, we see um, through this election what a big difference you can make um, with your vote. Georgians got out and voted and made a change. Um, and um, you know, it doesn't matter who you vote for. Um, it just matters that you vote, right? So let's do it. Um, all right. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, everybody. I'm going to let you go. Go gather those four objects and practice your sighting and measuring. If you have any questions, um, uh, you can go ahead and email me. And, um, yeah, that's it. All right, everybody, thank you for attending. And I'm going to go straight to the critique, critique thread, and I'm going to enter my critique for each of you. Um, I'm going to do that right now. So this might be a good time, if you haven't commented, to hang out in the, um, in the crit critique thread. All right, everybody, thanks. See you soon. Have a nice day, you too, Amy. <laughs>